Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 2328 that says number of increasing path in a grid. So guys, although this question is tagged as a hard question, but this is of uh, uh, near to medium level question, medium to medium hard. And yeah, if you have some fundamental knowledge of how DFS works or how recursion works, then you will be able to solve this question by your own. So yeah, guys, try to solve this question by your own. And then if you have still face any difficulty, watch this video. Okay, so now let's jump on to the question description. So here you would be given what M cross N matrix and you can traverse in all four directions that is up, down, left and right. Further, you need to find number of strictly increasing path. So strictly increasing path is nothing but the values of the node that you traverse must be greater than the previous node, right? So, it, so the path is uh, strictly increasing, okay? And here you can start from any cell and end at any cell. So the source as well as the destination cell are uh, can be any. There is no fixed source and destination cell. And yeah, the answer can be very large. So you need to return the answer modular 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Okay. And two paths are con considered different if they do not have exactly same sequence of visited cells. So that means they are the cell is visited from different node or it's a part of a different path. Then they both paths are considered to be different. Okay. So this question is easier to understand. Uh, so now uh, let's move on to the example. So here in the first test case, we are given this grid contains 1, 1, 3 and 4. Okay. So let's try to look how many different valid paths. So valid paths are strictly increasing are present in this grid. So one would be uh, this all paths. So the number itself. So path can be of a length one. So each number or each cell of the grid can be uh, can represent a path of a length one. Right. So these are the four valid paths. Now second here we have traced the path of a length 2. So one path is from 1 to 3. Okay. This is one path. Then one is from this one. No, this one to 4. Okay. This is the second path. And another is 3 to 4. So there are three paths of a length 2. Okay. And let's try to uh, check uh, for a path of a length 3. So that would be from this one till to this 3 and 3 to 4. So this is one path of a length 3. So I guess total you can see that there are 4 plus 3 plus 1, 8 total paths that are valid or that are strictly increasing. So yeah guys, the question understanding part is simple here that we simply need to find the number of paths that are strictly increasing. So from the question understanding what you can, uh, what you got till now. So first thing is we need to try and find all the paths from all the cells because the source can be any, destination can be any. So we have to check for, uh, take all different cells of a grid as a source path and try to uh, generate new paths from that source. Okay. So we have to do this. That means for all grid of IJ, we need to find all possible paths from all grid of IJ or from all the cells. Okay. Now what we are trying to do here is let's say we have taken grid of IJ as our current node and from this node we are trying to find all different possible paths. So that would be nothing but DFS because we select one node as a root node and from this root node we try to traverse to all the children, the children 1, children 2, children 3. So from a one root node we try to traverse all these children up till the depth. right? And then if we don't find any path, then we again go to the root and try to find different path. So this uh, doing this thing is nothing but a DFS or a recursive approach. Got it? So yeah, that uh, that thing we are doing that uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to take uh, or consider all the cells as a source cells. And from all the source cells, we are trying to generate different possible paths that are valid. Okay. So yeah, these things are clear till here, right? Uh, why we are doing DFS because let's say in, in any so here for this example only let me tell you then let's say you have selected um, this path as a uh, source path so how may I, so how you will find the answer you will simply take yeah so initially previous was nothing so let's consider previous as minus one okay now we will compare if this one is greater than previous yeah so you see current source current source is a uh, zero zero right this is i and j Okay, this is our source and from this source we are trying to generate different path. So let's see our approach. So initially pre uh, there was nothing in the previous. So we initialize previous as minus one. Now we are here. We will compare with the previous. Is this node greater than the previous? Yeah. So add one to our answer because we have got one path. Now from here traverse the adjacent that is greater than this node. So this is the adjacent that is greater than this node. So we have found the second path. Okay. Now from here traverse to the adjacent that is greater than 3. So that is this node. So now we have again found one path. So from this source, we have found three paths. One is to itself, 
second is to three and third is to one two three to four so total three parts uh, paths we got here so and if you check here so this is the first path this is the second path and this is the third path right we got three paths so yeah by comparing with the previous and doing a dfs that means from the source up till the children we try to generate the number of valid paths right and yeah that's why we are we can say that here we are trying to do dfs this is you can consider this as a source and this is a destination and you are traversing from source to destination that is nothing like a traversing from root node to a child node and this is dfs depth first search okay and yeah the second thing we would do is we need to keep track of a previous element so that only we can make a comparison and yeah we can uh, know that yeah this is a good path as the this as the value of the node you created in the previous so yeah, it was obvious that we need to keep track of the previous element now what would be our approach so yeah uh, i have given you some of the hints that how we would try to solve this question and although the question description is very much intuitive that we need to find the number of paths and source can be any node, destination can be any node. That's why we have to try and check for all the cells as a source node and try to generate paths. So for an example, let's say we have taken this node, this node as our source node. Okay, so that is, we need to find answer from the node zero comma zero. So let's say this is our source node. So one is the node itself. So one path you will get from the node itself. Second is you can traverse to this node, right? So this is one path. So from 0, 0, you are traversing to 1, comma 0. So this is one path. Okay. This is one path. Now, how all the different possible paths from this node can be or can be added to the answer, right? So let's say from here you can traverse to here, you can traverse to here, you can traverse to here. Okay, so there are three uh this you can traverse up till here. So from this node, okay. Forget about forget about the source node one, just keep an eye on a node. With a value 3 that is index uh, 1 comma 0 this node just keep an eye so if you want to calculate this thing how many different possible paths are there 1 2 3 and 4 4 pa possible paths are there that are strictly increasing so what we would do is we, if we want we are traversed from here to here right right and we we will simply calculate what would be the answer for this node that would be 4 and yeah we would simply add 1 plus 4 for this path for all this path right it is the but obvious because yeah one one path would be traversed from here the second part from one to six one to four one to eight and one to nine okay so while calculating the answer for uh, node zero comma zero you have traversed node one comma zero and calculated the answer for this right so if you want to find answer in the next iteration if you want to find answer for zero comma one you have already calculated right you have already calculated why traversing see first you kept one as a source node traverse to three now from three, you have analyzed how many different possible increasing paths are there. Then yeah, add uh, and all in that answer, you simply add one because there is one path from one to three as well. And you get the answer for this. Similarly, from this node, you can traverse to zero comma one, that is six, right? And find all the possible answer for this six, right? So guys, now next time, let's say we have calculated all the answer for zero comma zero. Now you want to calculate answer for zero comma one then you have already calculated in the iteration for 0 comma 0 right you have already calculated so what you can see here that these are nothing but repeated sub problems to find the answer for this you have already calculated the answer for 1 comma 0 as well as 0 comma 1 and these are nothing but repeated sub problems right these are already calculated value and these are repeated sub problems so guys when you have something like repetitive sub problems what you can do is you can do recursion as well as memoize the answer yeah it is simple when we have repeated sub problems why to calculate every time instead we can memorize the answer and use the same answer and return it right so yeah that's how we would approach this question that we were uh, starting from all the uh, let's say starting from the first node we tried to find all the possible path now how we will find we will find the path from zero zero we will traverse to adjacent node and try to get the answer from the adjacent node and we would simply add one okay got it so yeah the same thing we would do here the coding part as well as the understanding part for this question is simple. So here what we did is we initialize some of the variables like answer and uh, m and m for the size of the grid. We initialize our dp at m. Okay. Uh, and yeah, this is our what? This is our first step that we discuss from the question understanding that we need to try to find paths from all the cells. So yeah, we added two for loops such that we can find the answer from each cell by calling the solve function. So we are traversing all the cells and taking the cell all the cells as a source node like from i and j by passing this to and generating the answer 
Now what we are doing in the solve function is this is our base condition that if the array or, or the index i and j are out of the bounds or the current element value is less than equal to the previous element then we would simply return 0 because answer is not possible. Now in the next case just for a while skip this right. So what we then what we are doing we are trying to generate answer from four direction that is traversing up, down, left and right. We are traversing in all four directions and then simply doing what uh, we are returning one plus answer that we got from up, down, left and right. Why we are adding one? Because uh, there is one path to traverse from uh, the previous node to current node, right? This condition is not satisfied. That means, yeah, we have traversed to the current node. From this current node, we are trying to find the answer from all four directions. And yeah, we are storing the answer. Simple it is, right? So for an example, let me take this grid here again. So guys, let's say initially uh, we are passing 0, 0, that is the node one. Previous was minus one. So yeah, this is one answer. Now from here, we are trying to find, trying to traverse in all four directions, up, down, left and right. And we added one here. Why one? Because there is one valid path. Uh, because uh, previous was minus one and minus one, uh, uh, let's say this one is greater than the previous. So yeah, for that we have added one. Now, we are trying to traverse in all four directions. Okay, all four directions. Now let's say we traverse, uh, we are uh, here, we will try to derive for this. Let's say we have traversed to here, three. So, uh, I, I would be nothing but uh, 1 and j would be nothing but 0. So we are currently at this node. Previous was and previous has now 1. Now we would check uh, this condition. So this condition is violated, right? Uh, because 3 is greater than 1, right? So from here also we would traverse in all four direction. All four direction, right? And get the answer. But we added 1 because there is one valid path from 1 to 3. So these path we have added from 1 to 3, okay? Now, whatever answer we get from 3 would be or can also be traversed from 1. Means all the path, path traverse from 3 can also be traversed from 1. So all the paths that you can traverse from the node 3 can also be traversed from a node 1 because there is a path from 1 to 3 and that is increasing and from 3 whatever valid path you may you can get you can also visit all those paths from 1 via 3. So yeah that's why we are adding all these things. So adding 1 for a path from 1 to 3 as well as all the direction paths uh, that are possible from node 3 right. Because uh, let's say there is a one path from 3 to 4 then 3 to 8 that path can also be traversed from 1 right because there is path from 1 to 3 and all the paths that are strictly increasing from 3 can also be traversed via 1 to 3 so yeah that's why we are doing this that's why recursion will work here because the same problem is repeatedly solved right for all the nodes the same logic we have to apply and that's why we do recursion so yeah i hope you guys are now understanding that what we are trying to do here in this question now one more thing that is remaining here is the dp and how we would memorize it so if you take a look then you will find that there are three changing variables one is i one is j and second and the third is previous there are three changing variables but if you see the dp array it consists of only it's a 2d dp that means this will uh, and we are storing i and j only we are storing values for i and j only and not the previous but is previous determines the state current state no so that means although we have three changing variables that is i j and previous but our dp size is only of two that is i and j and we will only store the answer from this from the for the current i and j we will only store this dp of i j will store the answer for the current i and j but uh, we won't uh, take like this we won't take something like previous we don't do why the reason is previous doesn't help us to determine the answer it will only check whether the current path is valid and yeah that's the that's the case of the previous so let's say if you are at uh, 0 0 at the for at, at this example if you are at 0 0 and you have traversed to 1 0 that is the node 3 you have traversed so traversing for the current path will help will can be done by comparison with the previous by this comparison you can traverse to the adjacent node but afterwards to find all the possible paths for the 3 it doesn't matter whether you traverse from 1 or you traverse let's say it doesn't matter if you traverse from 1 to 3 or 4 to 3 you simply want to find number of valid paths right although yeah uh, one mistake you cannot traverse from 4 to 3 but assume that yeah you have some slower variable like 2 so in this case you can travel from uh, 2 to 3 right 
Now in this case, it doesn't matter whether you come from one or you came from two. The answer or the number of valid paths for this node would be same or the answer for DP or the answer for 1 comma 0 is the same uh, uh, regardless you traverse from 1 or 3 or 2 it's the same that's why the previous doesn't determine the answer of the state it only helps to check whether the current path is valid or not it doesn't help to determine the answer of the state so that's why the uh, it only helps to determine whether the current path is valid but to get the answer of a i1 j1 that is the adjacent node previous doesn't matter that means if you travel from 2 to 3 or 1 to 3, the previous element won't change the answer of how many good, good paths are there from the node 3. That's why previous we won't store previous in our DP array. So yeah guys, I have tried to ex explain you the different aspects of this problem. And yeah, that's all for this video. Now talking about the time and space complexity, it's, it is obvious that uh, our DP array is of size n square, right? So the time complexity uh, would be also n square because we are simply trying to fill this DP array. And if we have already some value present in the DP, then we are not traversing. So this will re reduce the number of sub problems. So this is the time complexity and the space complexity as well. Although that would be a recursive stack that will uh, store these variables. But yeah, we uh, mainly consider this n square as our time complexity when taking big O, big o notation. So yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you